Hello, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Have you ever heard about the Tokai Mura nuclear accident? I bet you guys never heard of it So, in this video, my friends and I will explain to you guys about the Tokai Mura nuclear accident One hundred and fifteen kilometers north of Tokyo lies the small town of Tokaimura, the site of the JCO nuclear fuel processing facility. In 1999, two workers were manufacturing a small batch of fuel for an experimental fast breeder reactor. They should have used the procedure shown in the top of the diagram. Instead, they used the procedure shown in the bottom, and the final step was carried out in a small squat container instead of a tall cylindrical one. This change in geometry altered the amount of radioactive material required to reach criticality. On the 3rd September 1999, three workers were preparing a small batch of food for the Joyo experimental fast breeder using uranium and reached to 18.8% of U235. It was the CEO's first batch of fuel for the reactor in three years and no proper qualification and training requirements had been established to prepare for the workers for the job. Once the nitric acid solution was added to the uranium and the critically began, neutrons and gamma rays were emitted and led to the eventual death of the workers, which is Hisashi Uoshi and Masato Shinohara. The mixture in other words had gone critical. On the 1st October 1999, the CO staff recognized the need to bring the precipitation tank under control and initiate a plan to drain the cooling decay. Draining water from the cooling decay would cause the reaction to peace. Next, this proved difficult and required workers to dismantle pipes leading from the decay. The workers could work in the irradiated building for only a few minutes at a time. The jacket was later purged with argon. Boric acid was pumped into the tank to mitigate the chain reaction. Judging from the level of gamma and neutron radiation measured near the plant perimeter, the critically exhaustion seems to have lasted about 20 hours. After that time, the radiation levels dropped below the detection limits. So on 12th of October 1999, JCO set up a booth at Toka Tokai village for compensation of claims and to handle the other inquiries by uh, from the villages that affected by the incident. So the JCO plan was shut down, not just the purification operation, but the whole plan was shut down. On 20th of December 1999, three men from three men were taken to National Institute of Radio Radiological Science in Chiba. Two out of the three men were transferred to University of Tokyo Hospitals due to receiving a high radiation dose and was treated with a blood transfusion. Uh, one of them is uh, one of, of the three, Yutaka Yokokawa, uh, did not require the blood uh, transfusion and was discharged that time. On. on 21st of December 1999, Hisashi Ochi, one of the two workers that was transferred to the University of Tokyo Hospitals, died of multiple organ failure. So on October 2000, at least 439 people, including workers, firemen and others who responded to the accident, and 207 residents were exposed to elevated levels of radiation. The total number of people who received the radiation Exposure from the accident was right, revised upward to 667. So, at one of the closest monitoring sites, SPA reported close rates of 4.5 MSV per hour for neutrons and 0.50 MSV per hour for gamma rays about 11 hours 
after the one of the, the onset of critically. So the gamma dose rate was about 1,000 times higher than the normal background level. Uh, 11 October 2000, police in Japan arrested six officials from the JCO plan, charging them with professional negligence. So Yutaka Yokokawa, who was the technician, who was supervising the other two workers and who was hospitalized for a three-month period due to the radiation sickness. They could be fined up to 500,000 yen approximately and still jail time for five years and he be subject to hard labor. So the president of the company has not been arrested. Criminal charge as expected to be brought against the company. April 2001, JCO and its parent company, Sumitomo Metal Mining Company, have paid about 12.66 billion yen in compensation to residents and local business, including 50,000 yen to anyone living within 350 meters of the accident site, and 30,000 yen to each person who was forced to evacuate if she or her agreed not to sue in the future. Regulatory oversight. The licensing was not in accordance with the fact that criticality might not occur during the whole program. It gets worse when the facility was not included in the National Plan for the Prevention of Nuclear Disasters. And the belief of not having any criticality accident made the recovery process complicated. So by having this problem, the company did not provide any prevention such as uh, alarm or procedure for the workers if something happened or if the criticality happened. Second is the safety culture. Alteration of a standard procedure has been made a year before the accident occurred. So the new operating procedure was approved by the Manufacturing and Quality Assurance Divisions but not on the safety department. So this action is a violation of a safety code for the worker also, due to the rarity of this special process and the recent layoffs, so there were no experienced operators available to, the, to operate the system. So, the company should provide training to the workers and also knowledge before giving the workers to handle the job. Okay, for number three, authorization scheme. First, uh, a some member who had no responsibility for the use of the dissipation uh, tank allowed the worker to utilize the tank for homogenization process. Next, uh, lines uh, of supervision and authority should be clear, especially where a change of organization has taken place. Uh, then, manager should be clear on their responsibility and knowledge limit within the management system and lastly uh, training should be given not only worker but also to manager to support the understanding of their duties so that the well established authorization scheme is really implemented okay, for number four worker training and qualification first the government the company should uh, have given the fundamental safety knowledge that curtain action could result in fatal consequence uh, such as criticality in the event and provide a special training which stress the safety control and handling to the operator before they can handle the process. Uh, then the philosophy of regulator was the system was safe if uh, it was operated uh, in accordance with the approved procedure and for the lastly the disbelief in credibility of criticality incident in the company result no specific operator training requirement for criticality safety so i will proceed uh, for competency of human resource okay, for, for the first point the staff should be <coughs> well trained so the staff member can get uh, familiar with the operation process and relevant operation limit and condition. Secondly, uh, 
Uh, the staff should be able to recognize and respond to focusable abnormalities, malfunction and consequences caused <coughs> by their own handling area of the facilities. Okay, the third point is uh, operation limit and condition regarding critically, safely, control defined through the uh, licensing process were modified without any safety consideration. Okay, for the third point is uh, the authority scheme to change operation process and not be properly established and payment to actively screen deviation from the limit or condition. So the last point is stray program and certain implementation are uh, essential for achieving competency goals such as making training familiar with the operation process, making the trainers competent to recognize and more other uh, examples. Almost 20 years after the JC accidents have been drawing the global attention, the accidents is truly regrettable but provide a lot of lessons for especially for those who are concerned about the nuclear facilities. The report overviews the detail of the causes of the accidents and laboratory reform carried out after the accidents. The uh, taking such as information into consideration, the report extracts lessons which are really meaningful sharing worldwide. So, that's all from us on the case study of the Tokaimura nuclear accident. We hope that you guys have understand clearly on what we have explained just now. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.